G'day, I'm Ben from Cash Pro Australia. And I'm BJ from TBL Property Maintenance. And this is Lawn Care Skull Sessions. Boss! What's g'day, happening? mate. Oh, g'day, g'day. How you going? I'm good, thank you. That's um, a fucking good looking shirt you got on there, mate. Oh, thanks. For everyone who's just listening, make sure you jump on YouTube. Mm. Have a look at me shirt. It's a fucking um, good one. I don't know how much I loved this colour. Yeah, it looks good on you. My wife loves it. Yeah, I am. Um, so sometimes I have a shower and put it on to turn it on. <laughs> I've um, got the same outfit. It works every fucking time. <laughs> doesn't work all the time. Um, me. I try. So um, it's a bad shirt, by the way, that you can get at uh, badworkwear.com. <laughs> Busca. Um, straight off the bat, eh? Yeah, sweet. Um, Welcome everyone to your Sunday morning show. Mm. Uh, we're coming off the back of a big show. Huge. Um, Fucking nearly two hours. And we just couldn't stop oh, talking. Oh, mate. It just went on forever. <laughs> um, now, I'm sure that there's probably been a lot of feedback. Um, and the feedback's still dribbling in. Yeah, um, we fucking we're getting to it but yeah we'll mention that next week and hopefully there's not a lot of hate mail for me to go through you didn't mention that you didn't mention the hate mail has to come to me no i mean look i think it's more of like it's a great community over there at lmca and i I don't know i'm guessing that maybe we have some listeners here certainly some overseas yeah uh, there's listeners a couple of random overseas ones which is cool and it's something that we didn't, you know, I hate to sort of beat the drum, but it's something that we actually didn't even consider. Like, we didn't even talk about people overseas because, you know, they're just, the bagging over there. And so, I, I, look, I believe that there is certain markets in yeah. America that bag all year round, but most of it's not. They just bag their leaves. Yeah. It's different over here. We're legit cutting grass, like tons of grass. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, look, I hope there's not a ton of bad feedback. Um Look, I was super appreciative of everyone's um, actual input. Yeah, that's and, fucking big round of applause to the people at uh, LMCA that all contributed to that that thread. Um, it put an extra half an hour, 45 minutes on the end of that show, but oh, it's definitely least. worth it. Uh, it's good to get everyone involved who actually listens and contributes. So very, very, very thankful for that. Um, yeah, before we get into today, today's episode, I just would like to comment how fucking you, good you look in that stripe like Oh, that. well, thank you very much. Um, boom. It's a big shout out to Kenny and Josh. You got one on too. Yeah, but I can't see mine. Yeah, but... I can just see I can how see cute it. yours is. So, um, oh, thanks, yours is all right. Big shout out to Kenny and Josh over at Stripe Life. Don't forget to give them a follow at Stripe Life on Instagram. Oh. Um, really awesome dudes. And, yeah, man. Um, love that trim star that Kenny's got. Oh, um, yeah, that's something different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's something that we... Probably not going to get to see it's, our market. Nah. Um, you know, I think that that concept's over. No. Nah, well, um, I think even like um, Rob was saying that there's only really been one walk behind sold since he's been with Skag Australia. So yeah, and I mean, I think we've only ever seen the world and the cub mm. cub cadet ones. Um, yeah, I've seen a few of the cub ones. Uh, yeah, no, because the cubs here, maybe that trim star will come. <gasps> I, don't oh. know, I don't know what we're alluding to. I can't believe me to say that. Um, but, hey, it's inevitable that we're going to talk about that eventually. Now, yeah. on to today's topic, what are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, man, now? something cool, something that everybody has sort of touched on that we sort of specialise in, and that is village life. Yeah, so when we're talking about village life, we're just talking about, like, you know, big sites, you know, pretty much, maybe not full-time, but, like, big on-site works. Yeah. Um, you guys will know from listening to us that we both have businesses structured around um these big sites yep now i'm on my way out get out you've been um doing this for a while and you're actually going to uh take over yep one of my biggest contracts yeah it's huge um and you know obviously you're already doing that anyway but this just really further cements your love for the for the village. It does. Life. I love it, man. It's so structured, and I think that's what's so good about it. Um, it's weekly, all year round. Pretty much all my villages, except for one that's that's probably my smallest one. Weekly, all year round. They all are good payers, so I'm luck lucky in those regards. I'm not sure if everybody's villages are good a payer as mine are, um, but yeah, I, I love the village life. It's it's just so nice. You get to know the people. Yes, there's going to be some fucking assholes, and there's at least one or two in every village. 
I probably got a few stories coming. Oh um, shit! Nola didn't move to a village, did she? <laughs> Good old Nola. <laughs> um, well, I don't do like weird psychiatric homes or like ones that like take on you know alcoholics or crackheads. Yeah. So actually, I don't think Nola was a crackhead. I just think she had like the crack voice. <laughs> um, that's the booze the booze is probably voice. just too much shoshka yeah um, too much shoshka <laughs> that's vodka by the way yeah um, is that how they say it over there the Russians yeah I think that's the cheap the cheap one isn't it I don't know that's yeah, just I don't what know. I say when I'm sculling the shit down <laughs> yeah um, yeah <laughs> so um, when we're talking about village life we're le- like let's compare it to um, let's just call them road jobs yeah and what I mean by road jobs is like literally you're hopping from job to job yep. each day. Now, um, some people are probably going to hear this and just think like, oh man, I don't know if I want to hear this shit. Um, you know, because as a contractor, if you're a sole operator, I think the village life is, you, you probably feel like you're employed yeah. a little bit too much. Yep. So I understand that. But I think if you're running a crew of almost any size, village life is something to definitely look yeah. into. Yeah. Well, until, uh, what, say five months ago, I was running with just me and my offsider. Yeah. Uh, we were absolutely just killing it, just us two. And then opportunity came up with you. Um, I actually got another village of my own. And, yeah, it's just expanded. I've gone from having two guys to having three guys. Now I've got four guys. And once I officially take over your stuff, I'll have another guy and someone on two days a week. So, yeah, growing real quick. Yeah, yeah. And um... and one vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I, call, I called for me truck today and he's like, yeah, it's in the country. I was like, it was in the fucking country the last time we spoke. I yeah. said, I just want to make sure... That the fucking 29th of April is still go time. And he couldn't tell me. So, hey, um, fucking hell. All right. So, when we're talking about uh, village life, quite often something that comes up is putting all your eggs in one basket. Mm. Now, that is a very, very real concept. If you have a job that pays, let's say, $2,500 a week um, and you have, say, a full-time staff member, yeah. if you... If you leave, which by the way, if it, let's say we're actually talking about those numbers, that's going to give you a substantial amount of profit. Yeah. Or at least, you know, whatever. Um, for doing nothing. Like, I mean. Yeah, just, for managing just, the process. Yeah, right? managing everything. So. Um, but if you lose that job, um, that can be really severe, right? Yeah. That can well, really- it just make, makes you, you know, you'd have to get rid of that staff member. You can't just find a week's worth of work like that. Yeah, and it's not even just a week's, like, it's 52 weeks. Yeah, um, that's true, yeah. You know, so it'd be like if you're a residential guy and you mowed, you know, 90 lawns, it would legit be like losing 50 of them. Yeah, yeah. It's actually kind of worse. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like losing all of them. <laughs> um, it's kind of scary. It is, a, it is a scary sort of situation to be in. Um, and look, not yeah. everything lasts forever, right? No, that's... I mean, it. I've done sites the big sites like this that I don't have anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess I'm in a situation where I was lucky enough to pick up that contract and, you know, I kind of outlived the contract. Yeah. In the sense that I'm really getting out before I was pushed out. Um, I think regardless of that, in my plans, you know, if Cash Pro hadn't taken the direction that it took, my plans were to have that for my expectations were to have that for a minimum one decade. Yeah. Um, which would probably put me at the age of, um, you know, say from now, that would put me in my mid 40, mid to late 40s. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, obviously no one can see that far ahead. Um, but I think I would have been getting to that point, you know, in my mid to late 40s where, um, hey, if I lost the site, you know, um, it didn't know you anything. <laughs> oh, certainly not. I mean, yeah. The, I mean, already now, you know, the way that the business has evolved from there, because what actually happens on these big sites as well is that village manager, you know, goes to a Christmas party, goes to a uh, quarterly meeting, whatever. You know, you can really build up um, the network. Great report. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Um, oh, look, if- 
once again, we're all always coming back to networking. Look at the, if I didn't know you, then I wouldn't have had this opportunity to buy this. And if you didn't know me, you wouldn't be getting money for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, you might. Exactly. You would have sold it. It'd just be a harder transaction. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that um, maybe some solo operators. So look, we're probably not talking really to the solo operators. I think we're talking to the guys that are aspiring to to potentially have a crew yeah i think if you're a listener here and you're a solo operator and that's all you want to be um i think this could be a little bit difficult to digest yeah unless you really want something structured and you just want to worry about one job yeah because i could do that at one of my biggest sites it's you know two guys two days a week four guys one day a week or it's one guy four days a week. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I was ready to rock and roll and maybe working towards retirement, maybe I would do it four days a week. And then I'd have Friday off or something like that. Or maybe Monday. Everyone hates fucking Monday, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, that's all of that's very real. Now, something else that could be a little bit difficult to digest is being on site all day. Yeah. Now, would you say, so for, for myself and my village, right, um, my worker, um, I guess I've got to stop calling it my village soon, but it's because we haven't done the official takeover. That's right? it, yeah. But my worker, DJ, um, who's worked there for like two years, he is on site all day from seven till three. Yeah. Um, if I was to run that site or if I was to be working, um, this is me not being employed by anyone else. This is me being in charge of myself as a solo operator. Yeah. I would never have structured that job to be in a, say, 38 to 40 hour environment or a 7 to 3 environment. It's like, a, hey, we're going to give you like anywhere between 6 to 10 hours a day. Yeah. So if I work my ass off um, you can go and on. really hook in, if I, you know, if I'm going to be back to take my kid to the fucking doctor or... I've got to watch, you know, netball training or, you know, just whatever. I'm just talking about life stuff, yeah, yeah. right? Let's say I want to go home and have a nap. <laughs> um, you know, um, that's Sexy how I would, <laughs> That's how a snuggle nap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I'd structure that. Um, so I just want to talk about some of the other awesome benefits, right? Public holidays. Yeah. Now, um, this particular village that, that I look after, this Stockland village, it is a locked in contract and it just keeps rolling, right? So yeah. if you, actually, we're just coming off the back of um, Easter week. <laughs> yeah. You get paid the same amount. It's yeah. It's a fucking contracted price. It's a good one. Um, now yeah. that's something you don't get at a lot of villages. If you're not working for a retirement villages, a lot of the time you're not getting a signed contract getting a verbal contract or maybe you'll get email confirmation that you have the contract. But with Stocklands, it's a fucking do 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 a well, solid contract. It, yeah, so it definitely is. But, you know, I mean, we worked probably two or three seasons without that signature. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, they... they Business wank- is changing. <laughs> oh, no, so I had to sign up recently, but they wank on about, oh, we're Stockland and we're a big fucking development company. And it's just run by normal people like you and I. Yeah. Um... And so, um, they're, they're, they're no more qualified to run the village than what I am. Yeah. Um, so, um, look, regardless of whether it's signed or not, you can break that contract in two seconds. Yeah. It's not legally binding. If I, you know, if my wife, something tragic happened and I, I could not run that site anymore. What if your dick fell off? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I... No. Nah. But, like, if I if I couldn't, you know, run that site and I walked yeah. away from it, there'd be no legal repercussions. Yeah. Um, so... Your name would get dragged through the mud, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wouldn't mean shit. You wouldn't yeah. fuck all anyway. That's it. Um, so, but let's talk about some other benefits. Um, Oi, toilets. Hey, man. Man, I, 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 I love how you just get real with things. Yeah, like well, I'm not fucking around, mate. I'm... You know, there's toilets on site. Well, how often do lawnies go, fuck, where's the local toilet? Like, where can I go to the toilet? It's Well, so when I had um, 
my days set up as a contractor, uh, whether it be me full time on the tools or me just you know managing the process. Um, obviously, yes, we have those on site toilets, but when we're doing those road jobs, I'd always have like little key suburbs where I, <laughs> like, you, you know, know yourself, you know when you're when you're ready to go. And I actually went through a stage in my life where like I had done a number two more in one in that one public toilet than what I did at home. Isn't that a weird feeling when you're like, when you're at home and you're like, when was the last time I sat on my own toilet? Yeah. So for me, it's a little bit different now because, you know, I'm working from home doing the catch pro thing. Um, you just shit in the But I've got to be honest, like, I know when when my twins were little. Yeah. Um, you know, and all parents would probably relate to this that have like little kids. You know, when you've got little kids, for me, the only time that I ever ha- was either by myself or whatever was when I was at work or at home hanging a shit. <laughs> and um, probably 50% of the time when I was at home on the toilet, someone was either banging, it, banging at the door, dad, <laughs> dad, 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 or, you know, some crazy stuff happening. So a lot of the time, um, and I'm not one of those typical, do like, you know, if I need to go to the toilet, I go... And I'm like done yeah. really quickly. I'm not. I'm not like one of those dudes who hangs out on the toilet for like 20 minutes. Oh, I definitely um, am that guy. Yeah. If I if I haven't sorted myself out in two minutes, I'm, I'm walking away and coming back <laughs> later. So, um, but yeah. It, <laughs> my know, my life's a little bit different to yours, man. My Archie's so tall, he can reach the doorknobs and just open up the door. He just rolls in on his when scooter. He, when like, he opens it up, do you just already have like the toe punk thing? To just, <laughs> no, just because we have a big bathroom and the toilet's in the back. So he just like opens the door and just cruises in on his scooter. He's like, wee wee. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm sitting down, eh? <laughs> he's just, he'll just re- literally roll over my feet with his scooter. He's fucking, he's wild, that kid. But. Um, so, hey, more about like, so more to the point, you know, about say toilets on site. Um, we got a bloody kitchen. Oh yeah. So it's obviously that's new to me. I haven't had a kitchen. Yeah. So obviously it's community kitchen. Now when I had Rusty working, um, on site and I had another worker there before, um, you know, I'm typically a fast food guy. Um, just give me anything fucking deep fried for lunch. Yeah. Um, but man, sometimes I'd be at work and it's like, oh, you know, smoke time and come back and, you know, because there's a kitchen there. You, some of me work is baked potatoes, fucking <laughs> all sorts of, you know, ravioli, all sorts of shit going on. <laughs> like because fragua. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, you know, it almost becomes a part of their, yeah. their home. Oh, you know? I kind of get that. I, I'm a bit envious of that. We haven't got anything like that at any of my other villages. Um, like the other day when we were there, um, we got, what, some KFC? Yep. And then, you know, okay, typically, see again today. typically, you know, you get soft drink, um, but, you know, I really love my iced coffees. Yeah. I'll just duck in the kitchen and make yourself a oh, nice yeah. coffee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, that's nice. So, you know, it's not something that you can abuse. Now, yeah. Rusty, my worker, who, um, he he goes to the village two days a week and he does our runaround jobs, right? Um, I mean... You can catch him and, and he'll have a cup of tea, he'll have a roast beef sandwich. They, <laughs> you know, they have their, um, the the residence committee, so not not the body call, yep. but the residence committee, they put on all sorts of functions. Oh. They do Friday afternoon bowling and darts and stuff. Rusty's getting ready to cruise at like 5.30 in the arbor, yeah. which you'd never fucking see me there that late. Yeah. And then it will, you know, all you say, hey, Rusty, you want... You want some of this? And all of a sudden, <laughs> he's got yeah. a fucking roast. I know. I can't Sitting wait. Sitting there with all the oldies. Um, oh, look at me. I love a roast sandwich. So, um, it's, you know, not only... Uh, look, do I, I actually believe it's it's a more relaxed... Yeah. Because, you know, there is so many hours in a day, and at a village, the work really never stops. You no. never actually finished. I don't think there's ever been a time in any of my villages where I've gone... I don't think there's anything left for me to do. There's always something to do. Yeah, and you just have to be. Now, there is a real factor there of motivation. Mm. Um, at our village, you know, even though there's 140 residents and, you know, managers and stuff, you know, if you if you want to take a time out and you don't want to do something, 
you kind of had that freedom to do it. Mm. And you, I think you have to be very disciplined yeah. and you have to be very motivated, um, which I guess comes down to the person that you are. That's and, it. you know, you go through certain times. Um, but, you know, like, I know that if you, if you are one of these disciplined and motivated people, you can actually structure your own days. So, like... I know, uh, say DJ for example, um, you know, or I'm, I'm just going to use myself as yeah. an example because just because it's a bit easier. But um, I always loved hooking in hard in the mornings, yeah, all the way up until say my smoko, which is anywhere like say like, from nine thirty to eleven, yeah. Um, so I would fucking hook in and literally do the bulkiness of my work. Like that was the most productive, yeah. Because when I eat, I I get like. I become like a slug, like a slot. Oh, like, yeah, big time. Like, you know, I'm like doing all sorts. It depends like, oh, what fuck, I eat. I need a nap. Or, yeah, yeah. It depends what I eat. Um, Today I feel like shit. I had KFC for lunch and then I had McDonald's when I fucking got our coffee. So I've, I'm really. My wife cooked me bacon and eggs <gasps> at 10 o'clock. Are you kidding? No. Oh. I got up at six, um, had to run some errands, came back, hooked into the orders and then, yeah, about 10 o'clock, eh? Bacon and eggs. Oh, very uh, nice. Because, see, otherwise, I won't eat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you told I'm, me if that. If I'm really busy, like, yeah. I don't... If I'm really busy, um, you know, and I have to go out and get something to eat or I have to prepare some food, sometimes I'm like, well, I'll just fucking do that. Yeah, next I'll, hour. I'll So she's looking out for me and she's like, here... You know, I need you to be real strong in the bed tonight. Have some food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Giving you some protein, some bacon and eggs. Yeah. Um, sometimes she gives me some pineapple juice. I don't know why. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, nah, it's all right. She listens to these. I'm fucked. Yeah. Um, Lou listens to all of them, so <laughs> it'll get to her. Um, just a quick sidebar. Um, if anyone's listening to, uh, sorry, if everyone, if anyone um, is looking for more content to listen to, the Green Grind podcast. Oh uh, yeah, I have an episode coming out. Um, it'll already be out, um, but they got some great content over there. That's Corey Ballard and uh, Lee Romains. Yep. Such a similar situation to you and me. Um, really? Yeah. So um, Corey obviously um, has, you know that bloody humongous business perfect cut site management am i Corey in the equation no no <laughs> so he also has the products and accessories business oh. leroy mains is um is, another business operator is he handsome i can't remember but i, mean, I know Corey is oh yeah Corey. so um he's hot stuff <laughs> So, um, yeah, they're just, hey, they teamed up and they do an industry podcast nice. and they, they interview all the key guys, all, yeah. the, all the awesome stories and um, you can't help but take their stuff seriously with how fucking successful they are. Oh, man, Corey's um, business is out of control. So, um, sorry for that sidebar. Nah, cool, man. I'm, I'll listen to it. Um, back, to the, um, back to the on-site stuff. Um, so, let's talk rain days. Yeah. Now, um, I know for me, like, we've been through a shit ton of rain at the start of yeah. 2022. And, mate, we got paid for literally every single thing. Yeah. And there was days where you really couldn't, you, you couldn't go out doing any mowing. No. Um, so, I, look, there is a flip side to it. There's heavy demand. Yeah. Later on, when yeah. that sun comes out, you better get your- <laughs> Yeah. You've had your rest now. you got to yeah. get to it. But, you know, for, in a small business environment, that stuff makes a huge difference if you're getting a regular yeah, paycheck. Yeah, for sure. Um, That's, uh, the security of the villages is a big draw card for me, um, having the family family thing. Um, you know, it just, you know that that money's coming in. I mean, if it's not, then something's obviously really fucking wrong. But, um, yeah, no, I, I like the security. I know that I can rock up doing my shit every week no one questions me no one says oh that fucking grass is a bit too don't worry about it don't worry about it this week and it's big yeah so if you know let's say you're in a transition period in queensland let's just call it may yeah you know you've been going hard yeah, out you've been doing fortnightly lawns you're getting regular paychecks all of a sudden you've got let's say a list of say 60 clients um you start visiting these people and all of a sudden it's gotten cold yeah i look you know 
can you fit me in next week? And then you're sort of <laughs> yeah. sit, sitting there thinking, you're like, well, all the week that I had, all the work that I had to do next week, now I've got to slide this motherfucker in. Yeah. And it's like, that's just going to fuck up everything because yeah. I'm, I'm not hitting that suburb that week. Yeah. So there's tremendous upside to village life. Um, there are some, some negatives. There is. I feel like maybe uh, if you have a successful business, then you probably would make a little bit more on the road. I think you could... It depends because, oh, like, you're really capped at what you have quoted. Yeah, um, I think you need to be content. Yeah, and if you're on the road, then you can fucking go as hard as you want. You can push yourself as hard as you can and get whatever you can. Yeah, so, I definitely... I absolutely... And people say this to me all the time. Yeah. They're like, why would I work at a site for $500 a day when I can earn 600 on the road. Yeah. And look, the way that I've always looked at that is that that person is straight up correct. Yeah. On a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Or a week-to-week basis. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say week-to-week. At the end of every month or at the end of every quarter, if you haven't made that $600 every single day yeah. and that comment doesn't mean shit to me That's and exactly it certainly right. doesn't mean shit to me at the end of, of, of a year when you're yeah, doing your, yeah, a year. When you're doing your tax because yeah, so, when, when you get to the end of the year you've had you've had all this fucked up growth from summer then you've had all this slow growth from winter you've had all these rain days while well, you're still getting paid if you're at the village you're not making as much during the winter unless you have this crazy efficient business that's doing 600 bucks every fucking week no matter what every day every day sorry yeah yeah which is easy to really do oh Um, yeah you can do that um especially residential because you have more people to reach out you can reach out for all these cleanups and mulching and all that yeah oh yeah it's super doable but i think my point is more that um you know, like we, we, we've had comments of people, you know, say grossing 25, 35, 36,000 in a, in a week. Yeah. And that is a tremendous achievement. That That is amazing. But if you don't do that the next week or like, you know, the week after that or, the, or whatever the case is. Consistency. It kind of doesn't really mean anything because, yeah. um, you know, if you've got someone that's grossing say 10,000 a week and they they're doing that every week of the year when you're looking at the bottom line at the end of that financial year and who was more successful uh, you know they're I mean it could go either yeah. way obviously. and to say that success isn't really defined by the amount you make uh, it's it's a big part of it but I mean if you're happy to flog yourself all year doing road jobs because realistically when you hit winter at a village you can rock up with a coffee in the morning you can walk around and look at things that you're gonna do like it's a it, oh it, bro fuck man hey, it is such anyone a- out there like I mean I'm I'm one of those people it it is hard for me to sit still yeah and I I feel legitimately guilty <laughs> if so I haven't why? done stuff during the day <gasps> but I tell you when you're at that village right it gives you the ability to you know, you're networking with the clients. Yeah. And, you know, I've got days at the village where I'm hedging, I've got my tunes in. You see an old man or woman approaching you and, you know, that you can see their mouths going. Yeah. And you're like, man, I'm not even going to take my fucking finger off the trigger right now. <laughs> you're just sitting there and you're just like, hey, I'm working, you know, I'm working, bro. And you just keep on going. In winter. Yeah. It's like. What's in the fridge? Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> I've and I've worked with you before when we fucking got to sit down and have some fucking coffee and cake, and it really is a completely different story, and yeah. it really allows you to refresh, um, you know. And oh, look, I think I think sometimes in in the lawn mowing game, we you know, and we've talked about family work life balance. We talk about physical and mental health. Yeah, if you're in one of these situations where. Um, you don't have to be gun ho all the time. Yeah. It can be very therapeutic. And it gives you time to think too. It, it gives you time to plan moving into summer. Yep. Because uh, it is a fucking, like, summers at the moment are pretty hectic. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, look, I know, for example, um, my work at DJ, 
at one point I had pitched to him to go back on the road. Yeah. And like he he didn't even want to entertain. Yeah. Not even for one minute did he. He said, "I absolutely love running this side. I love it so much. I yeah. don't want to go back to doing well, that." That's good. And you know, like that's from an employee's perspective. Yeah. Um, I I actually think as like a on site, you know, working for yourself environment. It's even way better. Yeah. Um, however, you do have to be content with what you said. If you've got a contract that's going to pay you um, $2,200 a week, you know, you're really not going to earn anything more than that yeah. unless you leave. Yeah, okay. In saying that, I did mention before with the residential guys making money up in the winter with cleanups and mulching. Mm-hmm. Now, mulching these villages is not a fucking small task and that is pretty much the hardest we work in winter um we'll do a lot of tree trimming and shit like that but then mulching i fucking we move some mulch we definitely move some mulch but and is it is it at an extra cost um oh. because the way that our village is structured this could be a little bit awkward because we're, we're doing a show yeah and you're taking over but um whilst it is an extra job um you, you really got to have the manpower yeah which you will have yeah but you know if you were in a solo operator environment and you're supposed to be doing 40 hours there um it's not going to be easy to fulfill an extra no. x amount of hours no to do anything now there would be exceptions um i guess it depends where they pull the budget from well that depends it. you know what is structured um but you know, for me, like I, I know, I've got mine set up so that there's uh, one full time worker. Rusty comes in two days a week. Really, if if we want to earn anything else, I have to get Rusty to go back on those alternative days, which is su- super doable, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, or you got to bring more guys in. Yeah, and um, that's I've got extra guys now. We, you know, I'm I'm bringing in Will, and we'll we'll come into the village, and we'll you know, learn as much as we can while you're still there. And, um, yeah, it's part and parcel of taking over something that that size, I think, is just fucking, you know, nothing out of the finer points. Because there are a lot of things that I have no idea about at your village that, I don't know, like, that happen in my villages. It's, uh, they're completely different. So yours is way more structured, way more official. All of mine are kind of like turn up, do your job, go home. I don't have to sign in. I don't have to do, you know. Yeah, so we don't sign in. I, I believe we're supposed to. Yeah. Um, now, I just, I, <laughs> it's sidebar time. <laughs> um, so we have um, an awesome manager. And we've been through a few managers, right? Mm. Um, we have an awesome manager. Um, her name's Kristen. She's like maybe our age, maybe your age. I know you're yep. a couple of years older. Um is pretty new to the role so you know like we don't have someone coming down on us all the time yeah but the manager above her <laughs> this dude his name's ash and <laughs> he's like um so he's egyptian he's french egyptian i don't know how that works right and um everyone everyone needs to put this in their google machine he looks like uh dk from underbelly australian oh yeah yeah australian tv series he's kind of like this fucking mongrel dude who yeah. just looks like he'd kill you yeah now this dude Ash for the most part he's a pretty nice guy yeah really nice if you look at him he is not going to say a fucking thing to you <laughs> if you go right up and say good morning Ash how are you he'll go he'll go now if you're really cool like so Rusty used to always give me shit he's like hey he calls me brother if you like morning Ash how are you hello brother yeah if, if <laughs> you're someone me- like casually, you might get a head nod. Yeah. And he legit reminds you of one of those dudes that like, hey, little gardener, fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking come here, I fuck your face. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's fucking hell. Um, I can't wait. So he's super intimidating guy. He's like full buff ass. Oh, I've always wanted um, to be face fucked by an Egyptian French man. <laughs> <laughs> but... um you know, he, he's an absolute classic. Um, he's actually so, a really nice dude. I've spoken to him a couple of times when I've been there. Yeah. Um, so, um, but it, it's one of those situations where the people above you, the roles are changing and yeah. there's other people to answer to. And we also have a whole body corporate committee. Yeah. Um, which is like, I think 
um, the maximum that they allow on these committees is like seven. Yeah. How many do you have at the other? Three. Three. Three now. Oh fuck that's Yeah, the whole body so the whole body court bailed out of my village. They said get fucked because there was one guy who consistently was taking them to the commission. And and if if nobody like people who don't know, it's basically like a ruling body and he was taking them for things just so petty. Um so we used to do the full site service, mm-hmm. everything. Um, all the guns out the front, not the ones behind, uh, not not in the backyards, but all the frontage, everything. So it's worked like that for 27 years. So this guy had, you know, a B in his bonnet because they didn't want him on the committee because he they they felt like he was a bit of a troublemaker, um, and <laughs> he made some fucking trouble. And he <laughs> he took them to the commission, and I've had so the portions of the gardens in between houses have been taken away from me and to date no one has touched them this was an there was records being set in this place for for sales and all the res, uh the real estates were using it like oh all the gardens are maintained by on-site maintenance workers blah blah, blah. and fuck man the hedges are way over the road like they're they're surpassing the solar panels the weeds are like meters high in some of these garden beds so we we have rules in our village that nothing can touch the 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 eaves. yeah that's the same rules so, in because it, you know all sorts of problems with vermin and rats and you know yep. all sorts of shit fucking so, pythons um, yeah so um and, and it it makes it easier on us because you know what your job role is yeah and you don't really you know it's hard to do that shit in the summertime yeah but in winter it's like okay we do all the hedge reductions we're gonna make this right so that when we come around in summertime we don't even have to look at a fucking yeah ladder. um it gives me anxiety going there and seeing some of the some of the gardens that we used to maintain absolutely um they were the whole place was manic like ben's been through it plenty of times everything was touched fortnightly um we yeah. we tip everything Everything was mowed, blowed. All the garden beds were clear of weeds, and now it's all fucking. Um, just another quick yeah. little note about um, the gun, the fuck boy manager. Yeah. Um, we we have a resident, um, absolute full pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, you know, some days he's cool, sometimes he's not. He reminds me of um, Bad Santa. Oh yeah, and he like kind of looks. Bob. He kind of looks like yeah. him too, like a really but, oh, badly I mean, aged I could dude. Go on about this dude, but he like you know. Oh, I'm fucking legally blind. Oh, what's that? I'm fucking deaf. And, you know, this I swear there's nothing fucking wrong with this dude. Um, and he's like, oh, me fucking, my legs or something, you know, he's got a problem with his calves. And he kind of reminded me then of that, the, the guy from King of the Hill, oh. the, the dad that had his machine, he, he had his <laughs> shins machine gunned off. Yeah. So they just sewed his ankles to his knees. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that's what he reminds yeah. me of yeah alright um, you know so um, absolute complete pain in the ass but we don't see Ash around the village much yeah and I happened to finally ask the question I was like you know I just asked one of the other managers and apparently he got into a physical altercation with <laughs> with this resident Les oh. um, and there's like legit litigation yeah that's crazy so that actually makes me think that he would fucking headbutt me yeah, he probably would. Little guy in the fuck boy. Yeah. <laughs> he's Get my a... fucking pills, John. Oh, shit. <laughs> I heard him say that to a manager one day. Did he? Yeah, we were just sitting there talking, eh? And he's like, oh, are we going to go to lunch? And he's like, get my pills, John. Really? <laughs> fuck. The dude's name was John, but... Yeah, they, he's they don't do gangster. J- they don't do J's well. Ash the fucking Egyptian French gangster. Hello, John. Oh, well. Um, so, um, sorry about that sidebar. That's all right. Um, so, yeah, look. It, it kind of is like one of those um, mentalities as well with the scope of works. Yeah. The reason why we love it so much is you're not just driving to a job, pulling out the whippersnipper, whippersnipping, mowing, you know. Yeah. First you'll bip, then you'll blow, then you'll <laughs> then you mow. You're not really doing that. No. Um, can I list some of the... Yeah, some of the, you, know, you know what? One of the main things that I love about it too is the interaction because... Yeah. It's, it's a good point and a bad point because you get to meet, say, a hundred really nice people, but then you also have to please a hundred really nice people who pay money to have you work there. 
So one thing that I think is important for everyone to, to sort of understand a little bit is also like the quoting and pricing structures. Yeah. Because like lots and lots of stuff changes um, when you're talking about what you can make in a week and what you can charge in a week. And, you know, we talked a little bit before about, you know, you can earn X amount on the road and the sky's <coughs> the limit. Yeah. But what you really got to consider is how much your overheads are really going down. Yeah. Um, Huge. Yeah. And so when we first were getting into the the village life, you know, we were, we were new to it. We didn't really know how to charge. Now, we yeah. knew how much we were earning um, and we knew how much we really wanted the opportunity and wanted to go forward. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of that, I kind of upsold myself. Yeah. Um, well, that's part and parcel, isn't it? You've got to fucking fake it till you make it. If it's your first sight, then you really have to put in the hard yards. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, like I think we were sort of looking at, we always started with the basic fundamentals. Okay, what are you earning for a day? Yeah. And then when when you look at what you're earning for a day, let's just use a figure of $1,000 for a two-man crew. Yep. Okay, what is that costing you? to earn that for a day. Yeah. And finding that out could be a little bit tricky. Yeah, but, so you know, fuel, rego, trailer rego, insurances. No, so insurances like, won't really change. I think insurances probably go up when you, for the biggest size. Actually, that's something um, that I'm glad you brought up because yeah. we, we only had 10 million cover. Yeah. When you work at some of these sites, the minimum sometimes is 20 mil. Yeah. Which obviously does cost you a little bit more. Um, no, so what we what we basically did was, okay, you have to look at how much that money is costing you to make in that environment. Yeah. I don't think I've ever gone as far as um, really looking at regos and stuff. Yeah. It's just too much. Like for me, um, I, I don't think I was ever fortunate enough to have a dedicated business vehicle. Yeah. Like I- my, bi- my business vehicle, it, you know, It'd be hitched up to my trailer five days a week. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, like if I was to go for a, a surf or if I was going to basketball one night yeah, or see, something like that, I would use that rig. I've got um, a family car and I don't have any hobbies outside of work, so yeah, <laughs> I bring my truck here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, mean, yeah. Don't, look, I think it's more of a case of um, my car. Like, yeah, my car was my car yeah. sort of thing. Uh, anyway, nevertheless... Um, and then you have to have a look at what's possible at the other place. Yeah. Can I charge $1,000 a day? And also, what is it going to cost me to earn that $1,000 a day? Yeah. Now, the, the differences should be dramatic. It shouldn't cost you the same amount to do on-site work yeah. on a per-day basis as it would if, if you were doing road jobs. No. Um, so, you know, you got to take all your travel times into consideration. you got to take... Um, you know, the stop starting with all the fuel and bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, and, you know, any other variables that come into it, I guess. Um, at our site, we don't even need a vehicle. Yeah. There's a vehicle on site. It's actually a, a Stockland vehicle. That's awesome. We're allowed to use it from the hours of, you know, six to six. I noticed there's a golf cart there too. Yeah, golf cart. It's called... Um, Jiffy. It called? Jiffy. Nah, not called Jiffy. No. Nah. It's called fucking... Um, Nifty. Like, yeah, I forget the name of it, eh? Um, Golf does have a name. <laughs> so, um, you know, people ask us all the time. Yeah. You know, people reach out, and by the way, we love that. And they say, like, oh, hey, we've got this opportunity where uh, what would you charge for this site? And you and I could almost never give nah. really in a – like, we could give a ballpark or a guideline. F- yeah, but the first thing you have to get is a scope of works. It's huge. It's, it's like your guideline because um, my village – might not want something that your village wants and in a weekly you know a weekly schedule so it's just one of those things you, you get that scope works and then you work off that um so like for an ex- for example like we're able to like we have a site where we can use a 32 stand on um we can use a catch pro now we have push mode like we used to spend days push mode in the village now someone can they can't whip snip but they could probably mow the whole village in one day. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at like four people's wages yeah. as opposed to one. Yeah. Um, obviously, you have a cost with the machine cost. Yeah. But 
It's only eighty bucks a week. Yeah, it's really and that's irrelevant. that's a lot different to when you're paying two fifty to three hundred. <laughs> yeah. Or say, Dave, two, yeah. I, I don't think I ever paid more than two fifty when the guys were doing it. Um, yeah. a few years ago now, and that's but, a day. That's a day. Yeah, we so. would, yeah. I think it would take four. So no, that was including whippersnipping. Um, so let's say it takes you half a day. So that's two guys for a whole day yeah. anyway, which is costing you um, what five or six hundred bucks. Yeah, at least. So um, I think if you are looking at this type of work and you compare it to what you did the year before, yeah. On, you know, on a road job basis or whatever your other situation was before. You can have a look, okay, um, yes, there can be more money in it. Sometimes there's not as much money in it, but it doesn't cost you as much money yeah. at the same time. That's true. Which, at the end, you're only looking at that bottom line. Yeah. Um, so let's use the 40 acres um, as yeah, an example, which is not site work. You go in there and you cut it. Um, you know, some people will look at that. Now, I don't know how the hell to quote 40 acres. No. Um, no idea. I never quoted anything above five acres in my whole life <laughs> in terms of just a mow. And then just... Mow and go. Yeah. Um, the most important thing for me was how many cuts per year we could get. 100%. And by getting it at um, the amount that I got it at, I was able to justify doing it on what I felt was the cheaper end. Yeah. But, you know, you look at the rules and, you know, let's say people are using the structure of $100 per acre and you're not going to you're not going to be able to charge $4,000 to cut a 40-acre property yeah. with any sort of regularity. That's it. There might be one-offs or certain situations. Yeah. But I think generally um, you know, and what you really got to look at as well is you're not cutting 20 two acre lots or you're not cutting, you know what I mean? Yeah. You roll in there. Um, for the most part, you don't fucking leave. And no, like, unless you got to go get food. That's it. You just really like, all you really need to look at is what you want to make for the day. Yeah. Um, you want to minus your fuel cost. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing on the 40 acres is fuel cost. Because you're not going anywhere. You're just fucking driving on the same big block that you were which, when you rolled in. Which these days has gotten to actually be a bit of a factor. Yeah. You know, two years ago, whatever you had quoted for the 40 acres, yeah. it's going to be less now. Yeah. Because fuel is so high. Um, something to consider. Yeah, but... But um, general rule of... Yeah, thumb. Yeah. It's, it goes on your machine efficiency too. Like if you've got the machines to do it in a timely fashion, you can still be making like 200 bucks an hour. <laughs> if oh, you look at it like yeah, that, like if you look at an hourly rate, you know, it might be 40 hours. You do it in 10 hours, you know, 40 acres, do it in 10 hours, charge yep. fucking a couple of grand for it. What I found was funny, if we're just going to use this 40 acres as an example, because I, I say to my staff all the time, at the village, I've got like a staff member, full time, Rusty's two days a week. I come in and I do fuck all the tools, but I'm still there and I still yeah. do bits and pieces. I always say to them, hey, I can do this whole fucking site by myself. Yeah. And I truly believe that. Yeah. But what's funny is, and I'm sure you've had days where workers have let you down. Yes. And you've done the work of two men. Yes, I have. Um, so what's funny is, like on the 40 acres, we mow it with four dudes <laughs> and for whatever reason the, that one of the dudes couldn't come. Yeah. So you mow it with three dudes and you mow it at the same fucking time. Yeah. Um, it's one less chat per person. Yeah. So I think in a crew type environment, um, something that should be noted is if you got four people on site and you run into each other and you stop and you guys chat for 10 minutes, that's like a solo operator having a 40 minute break. Yeah. Um, and that's real shit. Yep. You know, you do that once or twice, you really, you're losing yeah, some time. Yeah, you're chewing it. 80 um, minutes is a long time. That's And and it's tough with us when we're doing some co-business. Yeah. Because it's like, hey, BJ's at me side. Yeah. You know, BJ's Fuck, in the always, shed. And always then feel like I'm And then rushed. Rusty's there and he's like, yeah. Hey, Rusty's here too. And yeah, so, I know. You know then, and then DJ's Smoko, there. like Smoko goes over because we're all fucking sharing stories from 
from back in the day. Yeah, so um, that's obviously a specific to yeah. our businesses, but um, you know, any I think any boss in an environment that has yeah. you know, say four workers, it's not like you're going to be sitting there reminiscing. No, nah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> So lots to consider there. Yeah. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to add to this topic, uh, pal? Not really. What's this in front of me, though? Oh, yes. Right. So this is the Whipper Gripper. Now, oh, my. I had no idea. So for anyone who is not viewing this content, this is the Whipper Gripper. Um, this is the trimmer handle, um, all Australian made. Now, um, we have this option now. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to bullshit anyone. Yep. Um We've we've been um, a stockist for the Darwin Grip for probably two and a half years, maybe three years now. It's been a great product for us, but product supply has just gone down the shit. Yeah. And, you know, we're really letting the Australian, you know, market down by not being able to supply this. Um, so, you know, it's not a cash flow product. Yeah. This is locally made, um, independent from Catch Pro. We are, I don't even actually have exclusivity over it, um, apparently, even though I'm trying to get that shit in writing. Yeah. Um, but this is going to be available on the Catch Pro website. Yeah. Um, it's actually going to be cheaper. It's going to be 139 Yeah, nice. Um, plus shipping, of course. Um, we do have a few different features on here, which are believed to be more ergonomical. Yeah, I've noticed. Which is good. We're always trying to upgrade, upgrade anything that we are involved with. Yep. Um, so the clamp system, we have we have a stem system. However, we have a special pivot system here. So you're able to move that trimmer handle up and down depending on what style of edge you're doing. Yep. And it's not gonna thrash out the clamp in here. Nice. And um, you know, it's been a while since I've been able to thrash out the inside of anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, guys, the uh, Whipper Gripper trimmer handle. Very nice. Head to the Cash Pro website. Now, we've been testing this for a, a while. Um, it was a really easy process, to be honest. Yeah. We messed around with a few different styles, and you know, I think within two or three prototypes, we had something nailed down. Yeah, nice. Um, so jump on the Cash Pro website and um, take a look at the Whipper Gripper trimmer handle. Now, just quickly, we do have some units available right now with this episode dropping. Oh, yeah. Um, there will probably be a pre-order on the website. That's because we've got a ton more units arriving. After that, um, we will always have stock rolling in. Yeah, cool. So even if you do see pre-order there, you, you're better off getting that pre-order in. There is a huge backlog and a huge... Um, there, there is a whole country that wants the whip, the whipper gripper or yeah. Darwin grip. Um, as soon as we get through the bulkiness of that, we're going to have a really good steady yeah. supply. But I do nice. think the first three weeks or so um, is going to be like you know those old TV shows where <laughs> everybody the show opens, it, yeah, and they all the women start bashing each other. <laughs> It's going to be a little bit like that, oh, I think, at the start. Yeah, it's cool. It's a good product. I like it. I Thanks like for bringing it. that up. I was ready to sign out. No, that's all right, man. I was ready to put a bow on it. Yeah, yeah. But I think we will put a bow on it. I am at Cash Pro. He is at TBL, and we are out of time. Thank you. Peace.